Welcome to this lecture on quality management, ISO standards and systems. So the learning outcomes for this lecture are we aim to help you explain what a quality management system is, describe the ISO 9000 principles and understand the development of ISO 9001. So let's go into ISO and quality management systems. Quality assurance management system standards provide the basis of control incorporating all the elements which assure standards are met by an organisation. They provide a selection of widely adopted quality assurance management systems. If we look at how quality has evolved over time, in 1900 we find quality standards were done by example. What would happen back then is Somebody would might have, for example, a pot and you would make a pot against that standard. You would try and match yours to theirs. In 1918, they introduced the idea of a foreman. This was some form of uh, expert who would walk around and, and help and overlook the work that was being done. And we got this concept of the inspector who would walk around with maybe a clipboard and start measuring your work and telling you if it was right or wrong. In the 1950s, it got quite sophisticated with the use of sampling and statistics. In the 1970s, quality assurance started to appear. These were kite marks and other such things that were some form of guarantee of quality. In the 80s, total quality management became quite a theme in the management literature. This was trying to embrace all that had gone before and provide a coherent and cohesive set of man, uh, quality management principles. In the 90s, strategic quality management was brought in. This was looking at how quality management can help the strategy of the company and really should be core to it. As we moved into 2000s, uh, quality became really integrated into all businesses and we saw the evolution of uh, digital ERP systems, that's enterprise resource planning, when most uh, manufacturing build, build to order um, systems became electronic. Uh, and by 2015, we were starting to see the earlier development of Internet of Things, where quality management systems were automatically measuring and uploading information into the Internet. So ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, uh, or I, simply known as ISO in most countries, is actually derived from the Greek ISOS, meaning equal. Uh, it's important to have global standards for compatibility, uh, reliability, fit, trust and quality. Um, you will have, you're probably aware of the different standards we have for shoes. There's a European standard, a size, a men's size nine in Europe is a 43 and it's actually a 10 in the US. So we don't have a global standard there. Um, but if you are, say, buying a screw fit and, you, you know, you've got a, a 10 millimeter drill bit, you want to a 10 millimeter screw so you know the two things are going to fit together if you're buying a um, usb device you want that to fit exactly in the socket and therefore you need a global standard so your usb fits in previous years we've seen computer um, interfaces that were completely incompatible and this is the sort of thing that iso standards are very good for so they've got numerous benefits they make the development, manufacturing, supply of products and services more efficient, safer and cleaner. Uh, it facilitates trade be between countries and makes it fairer. It provides government with a technical base for health, safety and environmental legislation and conformity assessment. We can share technological advances and good management practice. We can disseminate innovation. We can safeguard consumers and users in general of products and services. And we can make life simple by providing solutions to common problems. So if we think about competing to make, say, a USB socket, as long as everybody has the standard, we can all hopefully manufacture that sort of plug across the world so it, it works everywhere. Now, the actual quality of that manufacturer might be down to the individual factory. 
but as long as the standard everybody knows what it should look like and they're making it to that same level one would hope. So ISA, ISO became the new definition of quality, the degree to which a set of inherent ca characteristics fulfills requirements. This can be qualified with adjectives such as poor, good or excellent, and inherent actually means existing as a permanent characteristic. So what is ISO and the ISO series? Well, it's actually a set of worldwide standards that establishes requirements for companies, quality management systems. Many countries have their own series. They are usually identical to ISO, however. And by 2000, ISO was used by 250,000 companies in 143 countries. So pretty much everyone around the world is using the ISO series of standards to manage their business and to manufacture things. So why should we have standards? Well, what do you have with you that has or requires a quality standard? If you look around you, you'll probably see all sort of things fitting together. And without those standards, it probably wouldn't. We look at phones. How do phones communicate with each other? How does the messages appear or how do you hear? Actually, everything you have on the phone must be compatible with different networks, with different providers and the software all has to work. Batteries is quite a simple example, but we have standard batteries and we can buy, you know, double A, triple A batteries and we know they're going to fit. They're going to be the right size, the right shape and have the right power. Glasses. We have standards in glasses. I'm increasingly having to wear them now I'm getting older. Zips is an interesting one. And various sorts of clothing material. All these have written standards. So sets of ISO standards, ISO comes in lots of different volumes. ISO 9000 is a quality management system. It provides the fundamental vocabulary, the words that we use when we're talking about quality and management systems. ISO 9001 is quality management systems requirements. ISO 9004 is quality management systems guidance for performance improvement. ISO 1911 is Guides for Auditing Quality and Environmental Management. Uh, ISO 14001 is in an environmental management system. So whatever you want to do as a manager, you can often find that there is a very detailed process you can follow within ISO. So what do they do? The vast majority of standards are highly specific, actually, to a particular product, material or process. ISO 9001, the quality management system, and ISO 9, uh, 14001 environment are generic management standards. Generic means that they're the same standard and they can be applied to any organisation. So if you work in uh, a particular company, you can lift that series and it will provide you guidance to implement such a system. ISO 9001 contains a generic set of requirements for implementing a quality management system. Likewise, 14001 for an environmental management system. All ISO standards are reviewed every five years to establish if a revision is required, so they keep them current and relevant to the marketplace. Quality control. Part of quality management is focused on fulfilling quality requirements. Quality assurance. Part of quality management focused on providing confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled. Management system. System to establish policy and objectives and to achieve those objectives. Quality management system. Management system to direct and control an organisation with regard to quality. So let's look at ISO 9000. 2015 Quality Management Principles. ISO 9000 is a series or family of quality management standards. ISO 9001 is actually a standard within the family and we'll discuss that later. The ISO 9000 family of standards also contains an individual standard named ISO 9000. This lays out the fundamentals and vocabulary 
of quality management systems. There are seven key points. We must have a customer focused organization. We must look at leadership. We must engage people. We must have a process approach. We'll look for continual improvement, a factual approach to decision making and relationship management. So let's look at each of those as a quality management system for our business. Customer focused organization. This means understanding the current and future customer needs, meeting customer requirements, monitoring customers' perception. How is quality defined by the customer? Well, we think about reliability, responsiveness, com competence, courtesy, security, access, communication, understanding the customer. Is this all that's required? Solely concentrating on the external customer is not good enough. Quality in the workplace is an important part of all employees' work. No one is ever against quality. Most problems arise from a lack of understanding or poor communication from management about what it is our workers are supposed to be doing. Everyone needs to take an active role when it comes to quality. So what is quality inside the company? Effective communication, teamwork and support, a thorough understanding of the requirements for each task, less wasted time and effort, and less pressure on individuals. It's important to consider mental health and making sure people can actually do what you're asking them to do. Critical success factors. These are those characteristics deemed strategically important. The system drivers for the current review period, and those order winners. What is it that helps you win business? Leadership. Now leaders establish unity of purpose. They provide direction and also help shape the internal environment of an organization. So a leader is creating an environment in which people can become fully involved in achieving the organization objectives. That's quite different, quite a different perception of leadership than the very patriarchal, uh, headstrong leadership that we often see depicted in films. It's really about creating environments and helping people flourish. Involvement in people. People at all levels are the key resource of an organisation. Their full involvement enables their ability to be used for the organisation's benefit. All too often we see sort of command and control structures where people are told what to do. And actually, if you provide an environment that enables them to be involved, you'll get hundreds more people involved in the everyday running of the business and looking for quality benefits. If you manage to achieve employee involvement, you'll get less waste, more, more involvement, greater motivation, less reliance on key like leading individuals, and you'll improve those customer supply relationships. A process approach. A desired result is achieved more efficiently when activities and related resources are managed as a process. So what's the definition of a process? It's a set of interrelated or interacting activities which transforms inputs into outputs. The ISO have definitions for everything. So this is a, a 1994 process diagram showing a, a make and uh, design and make organization. So we can see it's quite a complex looking process flow, but we can see we start off uh, up here with our management responsibility for the quality of the system, the training. And then when do we go? We go over here, we've got control of inspection and test equipment, control of records. Then we go contract review. So what are we what are we asked to do? Design control, then we do some purchasing, we look at the customer supplied product, we have process control, traceability, inspection, any non-conforming products and handling, and we offer servicing. Also in here is measurement and monitoring, inspection and testing, any corrective action, internal audit, statistical techniques. So we can see there's a fairly detailed process flow available to us. 
Continual Im improvement. Now, this is a permanent objective. Quality improvement is part of a quality management focusing on increasing effectiveness and efficiency. So in, this is our, our diagram for continual improvement and quality management system. We've got uh, on the left there customers and other interested parties. Uh, they're linked into the management responsibility who also have to look at resource management, product realization, measurement and analysis, going back to uh, management responsibility. Across the bottom here, we've got requirements, going to input, making the product, there's the product, it's the output. But then we've got customers and other interested parties. And we have to flow that in as a management responsibility to find out what's going on. We have to check satisfaction, that's a measurement. So these are all value adding activities across the bottom and information flows here. A factual approach to decision making is enormously important. So what are your sources of information? Well, customer feedback, process monitoring, product monitoring, internal audit, self-assessment, and suggestions. Using evidence in decision making so that whatever decisions you make are backed up and you know you're making those decisions on firm foundations. Also developing mutually beneficial relationships. The ability of the organisation its suppliers to create value is enhanced by mutually benefit, beneficial relationships. This very much leverages on the idea that value is co-created. You co-create value with your parties. If you share expertise, resources, information and plans with those partners, you're more likely to realise greater benefits. And it's also, also important to reward and recognise supplier successes, celebrate achievement and then everybody will achieve more. So let's move on now and look at ISO 9001. Uh, ISO 9001 specifies the requirements for a quality management system that may be used for internal application by organisations, certification or contractual purposes. Now this is the 1994 version in some detail. You can see there all the different elements up from one through to 20. So what are the management responsibilities, the quality systems, contractual review, etc. If you were to pull the standard, these are the sort of things that you would see. So if you go and work for an organisation that has ISO standards, you would expect to see this and you will expect to find all those different documents so you can really understand how your organisation is running quality management system. Uh, in 2000, changes were made. The main changes uh, from the 94 version were greater focus on customers. They emphasised process-based systems. They increased management involvement, focused on people issues and introduced requirements for continual improvement. In 2008, uh, there were some amendments, uh, mostly to a to provide clarity to some of the uh, vocabulary and explanations in it. Uh, they enhanced compatibility to ISO uh, 14001, uh, which were the environmental standards, which were becoming uh, very much more recognised and important at that time. Now, in 2015, there was another major change to ISO 9001. Uh, they changed the number of clauses uh, from 10 to 8. Uh, the first three clauses remain largely the same, looking at introduction scope, normative references, uh, terms and definitions. Um, but from four onwards, uh, it's sort of changed. The emphasis much on measuring and assessing process input and output. Risk-based thinking was made central, which made what was previously preventative measures uh, in the previous series redundant. This is a bit historic for you, but when you are working in a new organisation, you might be working for people who are used to older ISO 9000 standards. Uh, and these are the changes that were made. So it's important to know if you see uh, only eight clauses and you think, well, I thought there were 10. Well, this is why. So let's look at quality audit. Quality audits are often integral to quality management systems and are integral to ISO systems. 
So we have internal audits. These are done by company personnel on their own quality management systems. They're quality management audits that you will do. So when you go and work for a company, uh, you might say, right, we're going to do an internal audit on a quality system, and that will be done by people from the company. You might do an external audit. Now, that might be done by company personnel on their suppliers. So you might go out and do an external audit, audit on the quality management systems of your suppliers. You might get um, an independent agency accredited body to come in um, and you might pay them like a consultant. They might come in and do audits. And likewise, you're, if you're a smaller company or even a larger company, you might be audited by the people you supply. So uh, these are all ways that you will experience audit. So quality audits provide an independent assurance that preparations for attaining quality have been made. If followed, the intended quality will be achieved and their documented procedures are adequate and adhered to. You'll be looking at the recording mechanisms to provide information on quality. And you'll be looking at the corrective and preventive actions that are taken and that they are effective. You'll be looking for opportunities for improvement being identified. That was, you know, reflecting back on the idea of having all the workforce involved in looking for potential improvements. How is that done? How is uh, opportunities identified and are they acted upon? Quality policies. Setting policy must be carried out by top management. Your policy must include a mechanism for setting and reviewing your objectives. Objectives are generally specified for relevant functions and levels in the organisation. And, and there are very uh, good systems for setting policy if you look into the ISO systems uh, series. Objectives, when we set quality objectives, they must be measurable. Objectives are used in the approach to continual improvement and um, plan, do, check, act, which is our standard quality cycle. The check, you need to be measuring something and checking against it. Individuals should be made aware of the part they play in the achievement and the whole organisation's objectives. Everybody needs to know that they're part of this system. So that was a brief overview of quality systems. I hope you find it useful. Please do see the other videos in the quality series. These videos are all free, so please like and subscribe. And there's also a seminar attached to this lecture.